Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developertoarchitect.com. In today's lesson, lesson 44, we'll take a look at another kind of communication pattern within microservices called the microservices aggregation pattern. Now, in lesson 43, we saw how to use a microservices orchestrator. And this was a separate microservice that allowed us to be able to do orchestration across other services without uh, having that information up in a gateway. And we saw the effectiveness of this in the last lesson. However, let me show you another kind of pattern because keeping the orchestration into account, um, let's say that we've got this application right here which handles um, benefits, uh, eligibility and determination um, across the state or county that you're in or government that you're in. And so anybody can apply for these kind of benefits. And this works well with microservices because each benefit, child care, dental, utility, health, all of these are separate and independent of each other. And therefore, it makes a really good model for microservices. There's 140 of these benefits right here. And so this works well until we get this kind of request. What benefits is Mark receiving? Oh, you say, well, just orchestrate that. Hmm. There's 140 of those. I would have to make 140 separate restful calls in order to find out, does Mark have childcare? Does Mark have dental? Does Mark have utility? Does Mark have health? And you might say, well, no, don't be silly. Just run all those in parallel. Oh, so we're going to make 140 parallel restful calls using an orchestrator. And the problem there occurs, hmm, what's the probability of any one of those timing out? Because I certainly can't just continue to poll and return what I can. I need the answer kind of right away. Here's the other problem. Each of those different microservices, all 140 of them, all have a separate schema. And if that schema is stored in the same database, the same physical database, that one single request is one single request is going to consume 140 database connections. And so you can kind of see orchestration won't work for these kind of requests. So how do you do these? And that's something called an aggregator. And so watch this. Like an orchestrator, what we would do is we would add another microservice, a separately deployed microservice, notice that it has its own data, called a benefit aggregator. And now what this is going to do is store that aggregated information. Now how it gets that information is that we have a queue and we have something called a data pump. So all the child care, for example, dental, utility, health, all 140 of them, every time I get a benefit or I get a benefit denied or removed, it's going to pump that information out to the queue. Now the benefit aggregator in turn reads from that data pump and then correspondingly updates or inserts that particular information. Now, here's the question. Are we duplicating information? And the answer is yes. However, out of the thousands of attributes across all 140 of these services, all I have is two pieces of information, the name and the benefit. Mark has childcare. Mark has utility. And that's what these aggregators are used for. They're used to accumulate or to reduce uh, certain information to be able to handle that request. Now, with this in mind, here's the new endpoint from the API layer that says, get all, or what benefits does Mark have? And I'm able to now, per request, and these are also dedicated to specific requests, spend 17 milliseconds to go out to my data, do a query, and end up returning that information. Now these benefit or these aggregators right here have another great use case and that is for cross-cutting concerns as well. Let's say that there's a new rule that says no individual can have more than 20 benefits. Well, if I go to childcare to say, can Mark, is Mark eligible for childcare? Well, now a new cross-cutting rule says, well, he can't have more than 20 benefits. How many does he have? I can go to that aggregator because I also have that same information. This might be a case where I might overload that aggregator with a how many does Mark have because that's just a select count. 
And so now I can use inner service communication through either rest or messaging for childcare to go over to the aggregator and say, by the way, how many benefits does Mark have? Because I don't know. I don't have that information. The aggregator does, and it simply returns that information back to childcare to complete that cross-cutting kind of rule. So there's a lot of great uses of these aggregators. Now, you might be concerned about data synchronization and data loss, and there's a couple of ways of being able to handle that. Within the data pump, the first way we handle that is something called a space synchronous send. In other words, when I send to a persisted queue, I wait until I get the acknowledgement from that broker that it was able to persist that message. And so that's the first thing along with persisted queues. Now the aggregator would use something called a client acknowledge mode, where once upon receiving a message, I don't acknowledge that I received that message to the broker until I've actually done my commit in that data. And once I've done that commit, then and only then do I acknowledge the receipt of that message. And those are three ways of kind of really hardening the data loss piece. And there's another way you can actually synchronize, and that's something called a checksum pattern. And with this pattern, I can stream out the information from child care, dental, utility, health, all 140, saying I am sending information and here's my service ID and request ID. And the aggregator correspondingly streams out information, maybe to Kafka, saying I've received these. And then we can do a reconciliation at any given time to make sure that the messages that were sent were received. And of course, that there's any pending inside that queue. So for more information, um, you can certainly go to Software Architecture Monday, where um, this is lesson 44. And so I've got 43 other lessons in software architecture that you can look at. And also, you can keep tabs on where I'm at by going to upcoming events at uh, developer.architect.com slash upcoming dash events.html. And so this has been lesson 44, microservices aggregation pattern. And we kind of saw the differences between now when we would use aggregation versus orchestration. In lesson 45, we'll take a look at one more communication kind of pattern within microservices, and that's the gateway pattern. So stay tuned next week for lesson 45. Thanks for listening.